All right, so continuing our discussion of exponents, do you remember what we did? 2 to the third over 2 to the third. If you want it to be consistent with what we just looked at, which was quotient of exponents, you're going to end up with 2 to the zero power. Oh, we did not talk about what it means to say 2 to the zero power. We know what 2 to the 1, 2 to the second, what that means. What about 2 to the zero? Well, we also have equivalent fraction concepts. So we can also think of 2 to the third as 8 divided by 8. And so by equivalent fractions, that is the same as 1, isn't it? So that would mean that 2 to the 0 would have to equal 1. That you don't really have a choice, do you? So we make a formal definition then that for all non-zero real numbers a, we define a to the 0 equaling 1. So when you have a base raised to an exponent of 0, you're going to end up with 1. And why is that? Because of this, because of the quotient of exponents that we were looking at before, isn't it? To make it consistent, we have to have this to the power uh, 2 to the power 0 equaling 1. So a lot of times people think a to the 0 is 1, but they don't understand why. But if you remember why, you will have an easier time remembering the rule. All right, so another example. Let's take a look at 10 to the second over 10 to the sixth. That will give us 10 to the negative 4. We have not made sense of negative exponents yet either. But remember, when you are a mathematician, whatever you make definition of, it has to be consistent with the previous definitions. So let's move that aside for a second and let's look at what 10 to the second over 10 to the sixth looks like. We can divide the tens from the numerator and denominator by using our equivalent fractions. And now look what's left. We have 1 over 10 to the 4. So what do you think negative exponents should be defined as? It's pretty clear, isn't it? You don't really have a choice. Bend the base to a negative 4 power, then it's 1 over base 10 to the positive 4 power. So negative exponents gives you reciprocals. Reciprocal means 1 over. So in general, what if I had 1 over 10 to the negative 4? What would be that? Let's take a look. I, can, I have equivalent fractions. So here is an example where you are using your past knowledge to uh, become more efficient. So we have equivalent fractions. So we are going to multiply 10 to the 4 on both numerator and denominators. And then you're going to use your rules. 10 to the negative 4 plus 4 is going to give you 10 to the 4 over 10 to the 0, which is 10 to the 4. So in other words, base raised to a negative exponent does what? 10, the negative exponent changes it into a positive exponent, uh, and you become base that's in the numerator goes and sits in the denominator. So if you have base to a negative exponent, it, if it's in the numerator, it will go sit in the denominator with a positive exponent. Then you can evaluate it. Similarly, if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, then the base moves from the denominator to a numerator. So negative 4 power becomes positive 4 power. Look very, very carefully. This is going to help you tremendously. So negative exponent does what? If your quantity is sitting in the numerator, how is this a numerator? It's over 1, isn't it? So if you have something in the numerator with a negative exponent, you can take it to the denominator and make it positive exponent. If it already is in the denominator, you can take it to the numerator and make it positive exponent. So we already now know what negative exponents are going to stand for. So these kind of observations lead us to extend our exponent definition to all integers then by remembering what? That if n is a counting number, a to the power negative n is the same as 1 over a to the n. And a to the power n, positive n, is the same as 1 over a to the negative n. This is very important. See if you can make sense of this. <clears throat> so if I say evaluate 3 to the negative second power, well, that doesn't mean anything to us until we rewrite it. We know that 3 to the negative second 
can be written, 3 to the negative second can be written as 1 over 3 to the second power. So you have 1 over 3 to the second or 1 over 3 times 3, which is 1 over 9. All right, so now it's your chance to figure out again what is base and what is exponent. Do not confuse this negative sign with this negative sign. So go ahead and just identify base and exponents. We're not asking you to evaluate. All right, in this next part of this lecture, we're going to make sure that you really understand what negative exponent uh, does. Negative exponent does not make a quantity positive or negative. It simply moves the base to the exponent and makes the exponent positive and moves the base to the numerator or denominator, respectively, depending on where it's sitting. So this next set is very, very important so you understand what is happening. You already know how to evaluate negative 3 to the second. That negative, how do you read it? It's negative of 3 to the second. So it's negative of 3 times 3 or negative 9. So it's like there's an invisible parenthesis there, right? This negative sign is just going to follow through. All right, how about that? That parenthesis is like a, a separating your negative out here with this. So it's negative off. So that negative is just going to follow through. 3 to the negative second, we rewrite that as 1 over 3 to the second and then evaluate it. So the negative second power moves the base to the denominator, and you end up with 1 over 9. And that negative just follows through. This negative will just follow through. All right, that negative completes that. So negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So remember, the negative exponent does not make anything positive or negative. It's whatever is in the base raised to the positive exponent. You evaluate that, and the answer is what it is. If there's a negative on the outside, then the negative just carries through. See if that makes sense to you. So again, this negative 2 exponent made the whole base go to the denominator and made it positive exponent, and then you know how to evaluate it. Negative 3 times negative 3 is going to give you the 9. Let's do this next one. Negative 2 multiplied by itself gives you 4, and negative uh, 2 times 4 is negative 8. Now what? Well, that negative is moving the base to the denominator. This negative sign is from this negative sign. This negative sign of the exponent is making things go to the base and making it a positive exponent. Think about what's happening. Negative exponent is making things go into the denominator, whereas that negative sign is part of the base. So until you have base to the positive exponent, you cannot really touch the positive or negative part. And then you evaluate it. All right, so see that negative sign stays. And the bottom, you expand. Now the negative number exponent is on the denominator, so things are going to go switch and go to the top. This negative sign is that negative sign. has nothing to do with this negative sign of the exponent. Please make sure that you understand that. So here we just have negative 3 squared, so just evaluate it. So if the base is positive, do you need to move it? No. But if the base is negative, then it moves and goes to the numerator. If it's in the numerator, it will go to the denominator. If it's in the denominator, it will go to the numerator. All right. So negative two to the negative third power. So again, the base is ne the base is negative two. So base always stays. Negative third power on the denominator makes it move to the numerator. The base 
moves to the numerator, and the exponent changes signs. So our summary for all the exponent stuff we've done so far is our uh, any real number a and counting number n, a to power n is multiply a n times. a is called the base, n is called the exponent. And then we saw all these properties. When you multiply same base to an exponent and same base to exponent, you can add the exponents. If you have base to exponent raised to a power, you can multiply the exponents and have the same base. If you have a division of base to exponents, you can subtract the exponents. And base to 0 power is always 1. And just remember why that is, though. If you have base to a negative exponent, it simply moves the base to the denominator and have a positive exponent. If you have a negative exponent in the denominator, you will move the base to the numerator and have a positive exponent. This is going to help you do many, many different kinds of problems. All right, do practice problems here now. So pause and do them on your own. Assuming you've come back, let's see if you got that. Why is the negative stay? Because the negative is on the outside, right? Negative 2 power makes the 4 go in the denominator and have a positive 2 power. 3 squared is just going to be 9. This next one, what are you going to do? You have a negative exponent in the denominator, so it's going to go to the numerator. Same thing happened here, except you had a negative in front. So this negative sign is going to carry through because it's negative off whatever you're doing here. So see if you got them all right. Go ahead, pause the video and do them. Because if you don't, you're not going to know if you understand or understood the material. So there is no point in going forward if you don't want to get this part. So really pause and see if you understand it. Look, a to the negative 5, negative exponent made it positive exponent on the bottom. Here we have negative 7, a 7 to the negative 1 power. And what do you do with exponents? You subtract, or you can also think of this as 7 to the 1 in the numerator, and you end up with 3 sevens. And you can multiply that out. If you have negative d to the negative 4 power, negative d to the 15 power, negative d is your base. You have a negative exponent, so it's going to move to the denominator, make positive exponent. And then you have finish it out. How come this negative came on the outside? Can you figure that out? What happens if you take a negative number multiplied by itself odd number of times versus even number of times? Good. Odd number of times gives you a negative. Even number of times gives you a positive. Right now, we're not as concerned about this. We'll do this a little bit later. We just really want you to get to this stage. If you got to that stage, you're good. And if you got to that stage, it's even better. All right, so here, what do you do with the exponents? We said we could multiply them. And so we got 6. You can also turn all the negative exponents into positive exponents and then do the problem. Again, here you can simplify inside the parentheses first, and then evaluate, and then continue just like we did above there. All right, do your homework.